You're listening to Kate Palmer from sparkletart.com and today I'm going to alter a distressed ink background. Now I don't know about you but I love my Tim Holtz stuff and I end up with a lot of backgrounds that look a lot like Tim's but I wanted to make it a bit more mine. So I'm going to tart it up a little bit. I've started by stamping in Brilliance ink in white. It didn't really turn out that well. So I'm going to use my Ranger Dabber in pearl to add a little bit more interest. Now that pearl will act as a wonderful resist. I've grabbed my Snowcap Dabber and I'm about to go nuclear on the background. Now I'm using it kind of as a dry brush so I'm making sure that I don't have too much paint in the Dabber cap as I go and I'm just scruffying up my background by dragging this almost dry cap over the top of it. So some of that beautiful colour shows through but you also get sort of like a whitewash effect over the top of it. Um, now this will give me an awesome base to do something really cool with. Now I've got golden sleigh bells and poinsettia red gold uh, in my Lindy's Stamp Gang sprays. And yes, these are some of my older bottles with the original fluoro pink label. They've changed them now, they're so much prettier. So I've sprayed on the golden sleigh bells and I've used the little, uh, it's called a hairy dabber or hairy dauber cap. Um, to add some splats of colour. Now so that these blend a little I'm spritzing it with a bit of water and then I'm going to leave it sit for about 30 seconds and then dab it off with a tissue. So what this will do is this will add some shimmer and a little bit of stain to that white and just add a little bit more interest. Now you can tell by the sparkles already it's a bit more me. <laughs> so I've grabbed my Distress Ink in Fired Brick and one of the little sponges and I'm just going to use this to darken up that top layer a little bit. Now the really cool thing here is that pearl that I've stamped with at the beginning for the text for the word beauty will act as a little bit of a resist here so it will still show up really well. Now that Fired Brick is just adding a bit of red but I'm going to want to darken it a bit more so I'm going to add some Barn Door. Um, just for a bit of depth and I might add this just around the outside, I'll see. Now for this one I'm just going to add it to my craft mat and just use my blending tool just to sort of apply it to the cardstock. Now this just means I get a beautiful even sort of effect rather than any splodges. I've decided to add it to the entire piece of card because it was so pretty. Now I've still got some of that background peeking through and then I've got the pearl with the beauty which is acting as a gorgeous resist here. Now those two distress inks have just helped really deepen my cardstock but you can still see I've got the beautiful shimmer from the Lindy Stamp Gang sprays and that background still peeking through so it's making for a really interesting look to this but I'm not done yet. I'm going to have another go at stamping on here but this time I'm going to use a gold stays on metallic ink. You could also very easily use the gold delicata. I'm going to add a little bit of embossing powder um, and I'm just going to stamp using my watermark stamp pad which is my favorite and I've added leaves and just that gold embossing powder from Lindy's Stamp Gang which has sort of almost a translucent quality but then when you tilt it to the light you can see the gold creeping in there. It's so so pretty and that one is called Caesar's Gold. Now if you use it on white it will look like gold embossing powder but if you use it over other things that beautiful translucency shows up. Now I'm really taking it to the next level here. I've got some sticky embossing powder, it's just called sticky stuff and I'm stamping a, a different, um, a bit more of a bolder stamp over the background and adding that embossing powder and I'm going to foil it. Now this video was completed before I had my mink machine otherwise I may have used that but it's just as simple with the embossing powder and the heat tool and all you do is rub the foil while the embossing powder is still a bit warm and it does a heat transfer. Now you can see that the first time the foil did not cover those leaves completely so all I'm going to do now is just using the pad of my finger just sort of squash the foil into the design which will make a, a beautiful contact uh, and end up with a perfectly foiled leaf. It's going to look gorgeous. Now at this point you can't hear me thankfully but I'm sitting there at my craft desk going because <laughs> it was just looking so pretty. I think 
between the layers I've created in the background and that gold foil as the finishing touch, this has really made my Tim Holtz background into a sparkle tart background, which I'll probably go and use on a card. So I hope you've enjoyed this little peek at how you can use a few more products and build on your Tim Holtz backgrounds um, and make them a bit more your own. I hope you've enjoyed this. I certainly did. And um, I'll be back soon with a few more ideas. Bye.